When we've got a single resistor connected up to a cell, it's quite straightforward to use Ohm's law to determine the current passing through it, for example. But if we've got multiple resistors together, hooked up to a voltage source, an EMF, then uh, it's useful to be able to work out what's the total effective resistance that this network of resistors presents to that cell. And here we're going to be able to uh, determine that. Uh, so there's two ways in which we can connect a resistor to a cell, uh, a set of resistors to some voltage source. One is in series and the other in parallel, or some sort of combination of these two. Uh, so we'll start by looking at how we work out the total resistance for a number of resistors in series. Uh, so if we've got... Uh, we, we do this based on... Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's imagine we've got a pair of resistors like this. We'll label them R1 and R2. The uh, voltage across this one might be V1, and the voltage across this one might be V2. And we call the voltage across the cell Vt. So this is the total resistance, and Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the EMF around a loop is equal to the sum of the potential differences. So this V1 and V2, their potential differences, Vt is a EMF. So from that we get Vt is equal to V1 plus V2. We know from Ohm's law that V equals IR, and so from this we get the current times the total resistance is equal to the current times the first resistance plus the current times the second resistance. Now these currents, it being in series, uh, we know must all be exactly the same so they can cancel out and so we simply get the total resistance is the sum of all the other resistances. And this generalizes so if we add 3 we just add it on the end so our, our total is R1 plus R2 plus however many resistors you've got. Uh, if we've got resistors in parallel instead, uh, then the way we would do it, if we start by sketching out another one, so this time in parallel, we again label them R1 and R2. This time we use it, uh, find out the equation to combine them by using Kirchhoff's current law. So if we have a total current passing through the cell here, and then we have current 1 and current 2 passing through all these resistors. Kirchhoff's current law tells us that the total resistance is going to be the first current plus the second current plus however many other resistors we've got here. Uh, and if we solve V equals I R for I, we get I is equal to V over R. So we get V over R T equals V over R1 plus V over R2. And because we are in parallel, all of these voltages are the same, and so just as we could cancel out the currents in the series calculation, we can cancel out these voltages, and so we get that 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And just as before, if we've got some additional ones, we just add them on here. So we would add, we would sum the reciprocal of the resistances of all the resistors, and that gives us 1 over the total resistance. So once we've worked out that, we then have to do 1 divided by that to get the total resistance. A common mistake is to work this out perfectly, and then forget to do the final step where we uh, take the reciprocal and flip it back up the right way. Uh, so let's have a look at this example and see uh, how we can use this. So this question says we're presented with three identical resistors, each of one kilo ohm. Suggest so four ways of combining them and determine the total resistance of each combination. Uh, so the first, most obvious one, is simply to string them together. So three in series, and here we get the R total is one kilo ohm plus 1 kilo ohm plus 1 kilo ohm is 3 kilo ohms. So 
so that's using the series. Uh, the next one would be to have these all in parallel. So here, rather than in series, I've got these all in parallel. And so now we say that 1 over r total is 1 over 1k plus 1 over 1k plus 1 over 1k equals 3 over 1k. And so r total is 1k over 3, which is 333 ohms. Uh, next up, we can combine these in slightly more interesting ways. So uh, rather than having all of them in series and all of them in parallel, we can start by saying, let's uh, imagine we have one in series connected up to two in parallel. So the way we do this is we break it up into two portions. So we've got this bit in series with this bit. So if we can work out the total resistance of this bit, then we can just add it onto this one. So here, I'll label this A and B. So the total resistance is A plus B, which is 1 kilo ohm plus whatever B is. And 1 over B is equal to 1 over 1K plus 1 over 1K because it's 2 over 1K. Therefore, B is 500 ohms. And so the total is 1500 ohms. Uh, the final way that we could combine these is uh, if we, instead of having uh, one in series connected to two in parallel, if we take two parallel branches, but one of these branches has got two of the resistors in series together. So this time we're going to work out this top bit and say that's in parallel with the bottom bit. So this top bit, uh, quite straightforward, has a total of 2 kilo ohms. This bottom bit is just the 1 kilo ohm. And so we're going to do 1 over the total resistance is 1 over 2 kilo ohms plus 1 over 1 kilo ohm. Uh, and that gives us 3 over 2 kilo ohms. Therefore, the total resistance is 2 kilo ohms over 3, which is 667 ohms. So we can see there's these two quite straightforward equations which we can use to determine the total resistance uh, of a set of resistors. So in series, the total resistance is R1 plus R2 plus R3 for however many resistors we've got. In parallel, it's 1 over the total resistance is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, so on and so forth. So quite straightforward, and then we can combine these in different steps. So if we've got these more complex resistor networks, we can break them up into steps, do it piece by piece, grouping them all together as we go along.